Uh, the skirts are from uh, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. It's of a big uh, double bass and cello solo, played by a, an ex VSO musician who uh, hasn't played the bass much but certainly done a lot with pruning shoes. The old gnarled hands sometimes groan and grunt under this regiment, but we'll see what comes out of the hopper. Alex, uh, it's great to be here. Nice uh, to have you here. Thank you. At, at your home, we're here at the home of Kathleen and Alex Nichol uh, in Naramata, and it's a beautiful autumn day. Um, it's the Okanagan Wine Festival, and uh, <laughs> we, couldn't picked, busy. <laughs> we couldn't have picked a worse time to come by. I mean, the, the weather is beautiful, as you can see. It's a, it's a typical uh, Indian summer, again, in the Okanagan. Um, and, and your wife Kathleen is busy at, in, in, in the wine shop uh, pouring wines for a number of people that have been pouring in here. It's been crazy. But, but thanks for, for taking a few minutes out to, to, to talk to me. Um, it's a beautiful location you picked. Uh, you moved from Vancouver. You, you were the uh, I was, uh, I was one of, uh, bass player. One of the bass players in the Vancouver, Vancouver Symphony. Yeah. And uh, we moved up in uh, the fall of 89. And what we found out here was just an open field. But you're farming now, you're making wine, and, and, and I, you've been writing for a long time. I think you were writing in Vancouver, in too, weren't you? As early as 1983, yes. Sure, yeah. But uh, that's quite a lifestyle change. Whatever made you want to do that? Well... I mean, that's uh, quite a prestigious position you had with the symphony. Well, yes. And uh, I was a musician for 25 years, professional musician for 25 years, and uh, I enjoyed it, but uh, my home winemaking uh, took over. You know, it's, uh, it's a form of progressive madness. Right. You, you start progressive making a, a few batches, <laughs> and uh, pretty soon you're slipping down the uh, slippery slopes into the uh, back and alley and the delights. And yeah. Yeah, it's, it, that's exactly what happened, and it's happened to all kinds of other people in California, Pacific Northwest, yeah. that uh, start doing this, and it becomes their whole life. It's, and, well, I'm glad you did, because uh, as every winery is as unique and, and, and special and individual as the people uh, that are producing the wines, that have the winery, and I think this is um, uh, more so with the Farmgate wineries than, than the other larger wineries, perhaps, because it's, it is a little smaller. It tends to be a family operation. It's very much hands-on. It's very hands-on. I mean, uh, as you can see, uh, your backyard, uh, we have, uh, what, half a dozen varietals? Uh, if, how many acres here? Four and a half acres planted to Cabernet Franc, uh, Syrah, uh, Northern Rhone variety, Ehrenfelser, Pinot Gris, Pinot Noir. And the Ehrenfelser we have right here, and it's... Uh, oh, it's gorgeous. It really worked well this last year. We had uh, botrytis affected, a noble rot uh, to the tune of about 20% on this wine, giving it a rich honey flavor. No, the noble rot, you let the grapes hang a little longer. And than the, you normally would. That's right, and this mold the affects them and causes them to dehydrate and concentrate right. the juice. Concentrates those flavor notes of apricot, peaches. That's right. And raisins, it adds you a said honey. honey. It adds a honey Little layer. Honey. Yep. And it's delicious. What else do we have here? We've got uh, a Pinot Gris. Well, let's try that. Let try now, that. this is uh, from our north end of the vineyard. It's very rocky out there. It faces a uh, a 300-foot granite cliff that uh, acts as a giant heat exchanger. And so the, this is a, a big the one. The sun bounces off the rocks. Is it, uh, the uh, the, the rocks? sun uh, uh, absorb the, the sun uh, casts its rays against the rocks. The rocks heat up, uh, pumping the heat out at night. Right. So and even as, uh, as the sun's going down, it's still in giving July, off a great deal. At 10:30 at night, it's uh, 26, 27 degrees in the vineyard. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, 37 to 44 during the daytime. Mm. And what a pretty color too. And you were mentioning before there was a little bit of oak on this. We fermented it in a French oak barrel. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, just left it there long enough to complete fermentation and then we racked it off. We didn't want to leave it too long. No, it's a, because it's a very delicate varietal too. And you, in other parts, like in Oregon, there's a lot of people oaking, heavily oaking, I think, Pinot Gris, which I don't You can make a big style with. with Pinot Gris, but it's, yeah. it's got rich yet diffused uh, flavor elements. And uh, you want to have everything balanced. You don't want too much oak. No. What else do we have here? We've got uh, moving our, right along. Moving right along. We've got a uh, Verdelle, a non-vintage Verdelle. Uh, that's from the 90 and 91 vintages. And there, uh, the grapes came from Summerlandry, um, a small vineyard over there owned by Laszlo Vito. Right. I've met Laszlo. Yes. And he and his wife Margaret produced very good grapes. Uh, we also have a, uh, a Verdelle from uh, Paradise Ranch. A 92 Verdelle, and we have our Foch, which is Foch. Uh, which is a Merschel Foch, beautiful from two different years uh, blended together. The 90 was from the research station and uh, in Summerland, and the 91 from Walt Davidson's Vineyard in the Soya. You were mentioning before that uh, um, an acquaintance of ours, uh, Jurgen Goth, uh, was by here earlier today. And, yes, yes. And and what what did he say about the the Foch? Well, he certainly liked the Foch. He felt it really gripped the mouth. He <laughs> Grip the mouth. Yes, I haven't tried this yet. So. And he particularly sure. liked the uh, the Aaron Felser. In fact, he he came in mm. and he said, "If I hear one more word about your killer Aaron Felser, I'm going to scream." <laughs> <laughs> so he had to try it, and he liked it. Very quickly, before we go, I want to talk a little bit about the bottle of Shiraz that okay. you have here, because this is, uh, best of my knowledge, hasn't been planted in the Okanagan before. Has it been planted before? No, we brought the uh, the first uh, uh, Shiraz or Syrah uh, plants into the valley. Right. Uh, I think there's one other planting uh, in Ontario and possibly one other here um, that planted their uh, Syrah because of uh, what we did. Right. Oh, that's wonderful. And, and I'm really excited about this. Now, we, w we can't open this because we only have... You only this have seven bottles left, but I'm... I'm go you, you've given me a bottle and I'll lay it down and you say half a year, it'll be great. Probably, I would give it another three years. Another three years? Yes, it's I think be so. tough it's, to wait. It's big. Listen, um, thank you very much, uh, Alex, for, for, for joining me and sitting and uh, yakking with, uh, with me. And uh, uh, listen, uh, Alex and Kathleen Nickel uh, have a, this is a Farmgate winery, which means that it's a very small uh, amount of wine produced here. So uh, if you have a chance, come up to the Okanagan. Naramata is a few minutes from Penticton. And, uh, right? I mean, have them come on. It's, we're and, just, uh, uh, just taste a the short wines. distance north of uh, Penticton, and there's so many things to see out here. Great. Well, listen, and thank taste. you very much. <laughs> thank you. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye bye.